this time on Dangerous Flights. Stop. Stop. You just don't know what you're in for. The mavericks of the flying world are taking a time out from delivering planes across the planet. How's it going, buddy? For the first time ever, the crew's all together. I am not doing this again. It's a sickness. Like an addiction. To talk trash. Fight for your marriage. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> such a dick. And trouble. You're going down a thousand feet a minute. Hey, 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 yes, plus. All right, all right. Wow. Wow. So buckle up. Woohoo! For a ride like no other. Let's roll. I was speaking thunder. For the ring. Woo. There we go. It all sounds to rumble. Why are you f***ing me right now? You're crossing the border. On the border. This last year has just been a whirlwind. We did about 12 different flights all over the world, and it's just been a blast. There's been lots of crazy stuff that's happened to us. Dude, if we make it, it's going to be a miracle. Storm. Are you kidding me right now? Holy! I can't see anything. Nothing. Stop! 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 Well, we're not Kansas anymore, man. There is nothing around here. Can I start breathing now? Oh, you're yeah, man. We're just gearing up to, to do another set of flights here, so I thought it'd be a really, really good idea to get all of the pilots in, come to Utah, and kind of relax, get to know each other more on a personal level before being stuck in a cockpit for 20 hours crossing over oceans and jungles. I have not been to Ogden before. I bet there were some gunslinging in here back in the day. It's been a challenge to get everybody here. We had two of the pilots come in from California. Sunny San Diego to snowy Utah. Next time I'm organizing this, <laughs> we're gonna go to Cancun. We had Brad fly all the way from Columbia. When all these pilots get together, there's probably gonna be a lot of BSing and uh, a lot of ego flying around. Never met any of them, you know? Thanks for the ride, appreciate it. Thank you. See you later. Except for Corey and Pete. White. Hey. What's going on, man? Way too long, brother. What's the word? I've seen you a year. That is true. It, it has been a year. Gosh, Carrie came in from the Midwest, so everybody's traveled quite a long distance to get here. What's up? How are you doing, man? Buddy? Welcome, Welcome to outside. snowy Utah. Yeah, no kidding. It's cold right. as hell. Well, this is going to be awesome, Corey. I really appreciate you doing this. I mean, it's so hard to find a time when we don't have a plane in the air. Well, yeah, trying to get six or seven piles together all the same, <laughs> all, in the same spot at one time is damn near impossible. Oh, nice. All right, cool. This is sweet air. Boys? How's the break, Corey? What's going on? Hurry, what, up? what up? I thought it'd be a great idea for all of us to get together and kind of just talk about last year, some of the different flights that we did, and um, have some fun. Cool. 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 Stu, awesome. what do you think when you first see a plane? Sometimes I see these things, I was like, this thing's going to kill me. It's like, what? what is it? That's what? a good feeling, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I hate walking up to a new plane, because you just don't know what, what you're in for, especially these things have been sitting for who knows how long. They always say, oh, yeah, it's in great shape. The Cheyenne. Yeah. The Cheyenne. Yeah. The Cheyenne was, we knew what we were in for. And we were like, this thing is horrible before we flew it. It was bad. Well, let's check it out. 18 legs, 18 problems. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? I'm ready. Morning, runway five. Raise caution for birds on us in the airport. Got ice all over this 
windscreen and it sucks. I can't see anything. Nothing. No heater. See the heater? Nothing. There's no heater. We got things freezing up. We got nuts and bolts freezing up. We got a windshield that won't defrost. It's just one thing after another. That's hilarious. I forgot that that button was missing. It was like, let me turn the heat on. Oh, oh. it doesn't uh, exist on this side. It was so cold in there. But it sounds stupid to someone sitting at home going, ah, the heater doesn't work. But they don't realize when you're at 20,000 feet that it's like, you know, what? It, minus it, it, 32, minus yeah. Minus 20, minus 30 degrees yeah. out. And after an hour, two, three hours of that, it gets it's, cold. Oh, there's nothing worse than a plane that the heater doesn't work. I mean, I just, mean did you see the, the, the screws on the, the inside had ice on them? Like, yeah. how's that happen? At least you weren't in Russia. That is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. That is true. That was the coldest I've ever been in my life. Yeah. It's negative 50 now. It's too cold. I mean, it's just too tough, Look, man. Just... My feet are numb and hurt. I'm going to put another map down here. Maps actually work pretty good. So, can we have me another one? Here, one of our favorite places, Aust a nice warm Australia. Ah. Holy. Dude, if we make it, it's gonna be a miracle. Wow, oh, that's, that's miserable. Horrible. My shoes actually, they froze. So I took them off and put them in my 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 feet in socks and then into my headset bags. And it was the being that cold affects your performance. Oh heck you, yeah, big time. I've oh, huge. Are you there, for? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the main difficulty on this approach right now is us, Corey. We're, uh, we're cold, we're distracted. Okay, clear land uh, on uh, 25 uh, right for 800 Echo Bravo. We're going to the right. Clear to land on way 25 left. Frozen a plane, you just feel like you've lost. 20% of your intelligence right there. Yeah. Just, and I don't have that much. And to yeah, do you don't have much to spare. <laughs> on these type of flights, I think it is very, very important that the pilots work together good to be to make a safe flight and to get the airplane there safely. So they don't kill each other. And so they don't kill each other. I mean, I couldn't imagine getting in a fight with some guy at the beginning of a trip and have it brew and fester for the whole trip. That would be, that would be awful. But I guess. It's not always harmonious all the time. Oh, man, are we getting pushed? Holy. Almost powered almost 50, all the way down. 54 and on tailwind. Oh, look at that. Feel that? Why are you kidding me right now? Holy. Oh. I, in a minute, went from nothing to, oh my god. Hundreds of lightning strikes. That I've never seen that before. About a hundred strikes. Easy, no, no, we're good. Easy, we're easy, 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 easy. You're we're down to you're going down a thousand feet a minute. Level points. Level up. Level up. I got it down. I'm just trying to get the thing over, all right? So don't have to turn that fast. Pedal down. Hey, chop your power. You're gonna ah, dude, that's on. just shh, shh, please. I'm scissor. Uh, one thing oh. for uh, yes, you may evacuate. Uh... You know, when you grabbed the stick, which is the scariest feeling for me to have someone do. But the, weren't, you weren't correcting it fast enough for me. I wasn't yeah. going to let it go. But that's the, that's the thing. I wasn't doing it fast enough for you, but I was on it. I was I like. Didn't, I didn't think so. I didn't think so.
Wow. Wow. And yeah. you look like that scene right now. <laughs> Awkward. Awkward, yeah, well. Yeah. Who was the pilot in command? I was. But you know, we were descending a thousand feet print. We weren't supposed to be. And it was continuing and it wasn't bad yet. But I wasn't gonna let it get worse. There's a million things, you know, you have a glass cockpit with a million pieces of information, you're trying to digest it all. And then when he grabbed the controls, then it was like, now I don't know what's going on. I'm lost total control of the airplane. You know, it's kind of like one of those things you hope you live through it. And then after that, you hope it never happens again. See, that's a dangerous situation too when you guys get upset with each other, because usually right after that happens, after you guys start silence. arguing, silence. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, is he doing the checklist? What's he thinking? What's he yeah. doing? Is he, yeah, is yeah. he watching you, you my back or is he staring out the window? Team, oh, yeah, it's tough. It, it's tough. Matter of fact, next time I know how I'm going to handle it. I sit there. When I see him go for it, I'm going to like this. <laughs> oh, I'm going to fly it all in. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. Oh. <laughs> Holy crap. That's not good. That light means we have 10 minutes left of fuel. Holy <laughs> It's never a good thing. We are fuel critical. It is imperative we get a straighter line than this. Come on, baby. Give it to us. Fuel pump's on. Just a little bit more. So I think we're high enough to glide in there now. If we lose an engine. Fuel management is one of the things that uh, I think nobody really can understand what we go through. Because we can look, we can plan, and if, when we get in the air, things change. The airplane doesn't perform like it should, or the forecast changes. I, mean, I know that you've had a couple instances where fuel management was critical. Yeah, that uh, flight from Georgetown to Makapa, we ran into a pretty big wall of headwind there. That slowed us to just nothing. And it was the whole flight. Yeah. We hit it right off the bat. We had a lot of stress because we knew way in advance, based on our fuel burn, that we were going to be limited near the end. Let's watch. Woo! Oh, there we go. <laughs> These headwinds get any worse. We're screwed. That is slow. We got to be pushing a 35 mile headwind. That's not good. Keep an eye on that fuel pressure. At least one of the engines should still be running by the time we get there, but they're running pretty low, so I really hope we make it. Oh, there we go. There's... Who's pump on? Who's pump's on? We have fuel pressure. My cup of control, November 27608. Uh... Like priority landing, uh, fuel critical. 23 miles from the top. Right ox tank's dead. Now we're on the right main tank, and that one doesn't have much gas in it either, so. Come on, come on, come on. It was either the jungle or the ocean. Um, and there's nowhere else to go. I mean, you could you can try to head east, go to the coast, but the airports there are all so far away, you might as well just keep going to Makapa. Yeah. Don't waste gas. It's funny how sometimes I've been criticized about, well, your dangerous flight is not dangerous, it's just uh, come with me, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Even when everything is going perfectly right and you look at your map and there's nowhere to go, there's nowhere to go. So if something happens right now, where would you go? And the answer is you don't have an answer. Flying some of these small airplanes um, across the ocean or sometimes over the jungle where the normal aircraft doesn't have big enough fuel tanks to make it, we have to put these auxiliary tanks in here. That's one of the things that make me the most nervous is you're tinkering with a perfectly good fuel system and you're putting a homemade, basically aluminum box in the back of the airplane with just tubing and then piping it into the tanks. I mean. Survival mode. They hate fairy tanks. That's either do or die that on was, that one. Yeah. Last year, Randy and I were over the North Atlantic in the 206, 50 knot headwinds. We're between Goose Bay and Greenland, and we uh, didn't think the ferry tank was pumping fuel into the right wing. Mm -hmm. And that was that was a scary thought, because there's, I mean, there was no gauge on that deal. Watch this. 
I want you to look in that tank and tell me what you see. Or maybe I should do it, because I know I've been looking back there. I'll have a better gauge of how much fuel's in there. Okay, got the airplane. This is really difficult with these suits on, man. They're a pain in the ass. Oh, what was that? Okay. I'm taking off the cap. Well, son, that thing just flies up. It was like an explosion, man. I took a huge whiff of fumes, man, and I don't feel too good. Those fumes were nasty. All the electronics we got in here, fuel would burn, the vapors explode, and jeez, uh, we gotta be careful, man. We gotta keep this thing well ventilated. <laughs> Got to love fairy tanks. Oh my God, that yeah. was the whole cockpit's just full of fumes. I mean, we had the HF radio, the portable one that was installed in there, plus all the other electronics. It was yeah, it was pretty. You know, sketchy. this happens in North America. You know, you declare an emergency, and maybe, maybe, twenty minutes, you are safe on the ground, and you say, "Well, let's go to check that out." Right there, you don't have that option, and that's what this thing gets really, really, really complicated. but you had problems in a brand new Phenom, right? We're taking off and we're crossing probably about what? Six, 7,000 feet? I think we're up to almost 10. Almost 10 and then uh, pressure is just killing me, killing us. And it was I fast. Mean, it, it was that pressure really, went, it was like. Cabin, Cabin Cabin, Cabin, Cabin. Cabin. Uh, we lost authorization. Stop the climb. Stop the climb right here. Autopilot. Level off. Autopilot. Okay, tell that we need to maintain altitude right now. Slow down. Cabin. 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 When you can see me going like this because, you know, the pressure is just that. minus 10,000 and I see what's going on and, and I'm starting to read the checklist and it's the worst thing that can happen to a pilot when you do not know what's going on. And instead of being a good co-pilot and just paying attention to what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm watching him bump up and down the pressurization as the speed goes. Autopilot. Right, fly the plane for me, please. Maintain altitude and six I have the plane. We have a pressurization problem right now. We need to hold altitude for a minute. We'll advise. Uh, folks, left, left problem. Uh, we have a pressurization problem. I'll get back to you in just a minute. Number 777, uh, Fox. Slow, Slow down. 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 Slow Stall. 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 Autopilot. What the hell was that? Oh, you forgot to look at its speed? It's I don't know. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, the thing is so smooth, you know, and it's on autopilot. You didn't feel a damn thing until Stall, stall. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I look at this, feel like. <laughs> Don't slow down that on. much. Yeah. <laughs> you know what that is, right? Yeah, there it is. Check it out, dude. Now, when you're crossing the North Atlantic, there's airports that we use, like Narsarsuak in Greenland. Top 10 most dangerous airports in the world. We certainly don't want to end up like this guy. Hey, bro, I hope this never happens to us. Can't let it. Well, you guys have had challenges on the Cirrus flight. Oh, yeah. When you were going in to Nassarsrak. That and was they closed a... the airport. It was, again, one of a situation where it was a nice day. We might as well go full throttle and get there quick. We don't need the extra gas. Why would we need extra gas? Beautiful day. Boom, airport's closed. Now what are you going to do? 158, Papa Golf, go ahead. Uh, Right now. 
Hey, Pup Golf, Roger. And that's why you save all the gas you can. This is a killer. This is exactly what we did not need today. We're way past the point now. We're, yeah, we're physically over Greenland right now. So there's no turning back. Exactly the sort of thing I hate. In Greenland, the weather changes really quick. Big old front moves in or something and shuts the airport down. What's our, uh, what's our alternate uh, nook? Maybe, if we can reach anything. It's a problem, the alternates are just not close enough. What happened there? Our plan was to, to lean it back, throttle back, ease in some sort of safe direction, which we did. We started kind of heading to, to I think, was Nook, Nook right? Sorry, going and Nook. it was when just leaned it way, way back. I mean, super slow. Hello, this is uh, Stu, uh, the pilots from November 158 Papa Golf. Can, can you hear me? We kept contact, we kept recontacting, we just kept bugging and bugging and bugging every, every five minutes. Hello. Sorry, I'm on uh, the satellite phone. Can you hear me? Nope, nope, we're still closed. And then finally, 20 minutes or something, I have to go, okay, we're back above, and we just pinned it straight to it. So Yeah, that was a tough choice, out. so it's like, all right, Nook is open, and we got an yeah. barely enough gas to get there. But like, if we turn and go back to Narsacerac, then we're committed, because then we'll have burned that gas, and if it recloses, we're yeah. screwed. It's a committed choice. I mean, you're boxing yourself in. You're, you're well, flat, that is you know? one of the most dangerous airports yeah. to land. Brad and I were just talking about it. I was you're talking about how the ice cap and what it does and how it sheds winds, plus the high pressure system that goes down, parks off the southern end of Greenland and all that. And it was just on cue. This place is nuts. But look how many fjords you have. And you miss one, you pick the wrong one, you're dead. Yeah, this is crazy. On this arrival, we've got 20 knot winds in that fjord. It can get really aggressive with the turbulence and wind shear. Slowing down. Go ahead and pitch this beauty up. Yep, I got it. Thank you, sir. Man, right on cue. That was unbelievable. November 7, 8, typical Romeo, turning final runway 07. Got a long runway. It's windy, and it's going to have wind shear. Yep. There's some big flipping icebergs out there. Holy smokes. Like, it was bad. And it was just boom, all the way down to like a thousand feet. Yeah. I don't like that star swack. One of the most interesting things that I learned over last year was just that you don't know what to expect when you get to these other countries. Every custom's different, the agents are different. It's just it's crazy. What the hell? We got no power for the plane. Well, if we can't get this started in a couple of minutes, it means we're staying here for a while. What in the you hell? Want me to go see if the fuel truck has a oh. jumper? Oh, that morning, the runway was closing for maintenance, and so we had to be in the air before eight, and we go to fire it up, and our battery's completely dead. Here he is. We need to get jumped and get out of here. Can you jump us? No <laughs> this is the best you going, <laughs> jump us? <laughs> he has no idea what I'm trying to say. Battery dead. We need to plug in. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. You got that? Damn. We got to hurry, though. <laughs> They're closing the runway. Time we got. We really do only have a few minutes. He went and took a battery out of another airplane, ran it over, we jumped it, got ours started, and we were off. We took off. My GPS said 801. Yeah. yeah. In a foreign that's... country, good rules is if they don't speak the language, just speak louder to them. And <laughs> that always yeah. works. Yeah. If you yeah. just start yelling yeah. jump start, they're like, oh, yeah. See, yeah I've, I've become, in ferry flying, I've become an expert at international charades. You know, it's like, I need fuel for <laughs> jump. That's why I speak 35 languages. Speak louder? <laughs> I'm cheap. I don't like to spend money because every dollar that I save, comes into my pocket. So I avoid paying for handlers as much as I can. Roger that. And then, uh, so, uh, but if you come in, you know, sometimes I bring a little T-shirt that people will recognize. It goes a long way, you know? Let's see your charm. Show your dimples. <laughs> Lady killer. Lady <laughs> killer. 
Indonesia really loves football and uh, they're big fans of uh, Brazil for the soccer. And we do not have any handlers, any support, anybody there. So maybe I can make some friends. <laughs> it's Ronaldo. Indonesia. <laughs> How are you? I'm Captain Lucchese, OK? We're going to follow the flight plans. Uh -huh. Your friend Ronaldo. Yeah, my friend Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> That was my friend. <laughs> he, gave, he gave me a shirt. <laughs> you know, I, I love the shirt. That, that actually did work with some of the guys, but not, uh, not with that immigration dude. So on the immigration side, what do we have to do now then to clear? My role, your problem like this, to investigation for you. Investigation? We called the airport authority. Do I need to hire a handler? They said no. Uh, yeah, like this. We're waiting for the big boss, and he's going to be the one that decides what the appropriate punishment is for us. I mean, it could seriously be jail. You know, even today, I don't know what was going on. I think they were they they were just looking for some extra cash. Six twenty. Thank you so much, okay? We'll see you next time. There are two friends that always give me out of trouble. One is Ronaldo, the other one is Ben Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> the Benjis. Right now we're not sure the plane's ready. We need to get going though. I mean, we have to we have to get it there tonight. We don't have to do anything. If this landing gear is a problem, I'm going to be pissed. Hey, man, just drop it. Dude. It's time to fly and get that plane fixed. Let's get in the air. <clears throat> the ongoing challenge we have is walking the line of, of when to go and when not to go. I mean, we have to schedule the pressure of the client. They want their airplane, and then it's, it's the pressure of the expense that we have, too. Every day we delay. So it's, it's difficult. I know you guys had some big challenges and Wick getting ready to go in the Cirrus, right? Yeah. We're ready. OK. All right. And this afternoon, from about 3 o'clock onwards, it's all lifting till basically a clear excellent, sky. Excellent. For the North Atlantic in the winter, it's a beautiful day. Well, if they all went with a forecast like that, they're all going to live. <laughs> but they don't. Can move it pretty quick. We're in an hour. Five minutes. Five minutes. Don't take on a ferry flight if you've got a deadline to meet. Because that's the real killer. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think I'd be doing this again, but here we go. On every one of these flights, the, the owners are always calling, emailing, wanting to know what's going on, pushing us to get it there um, as soon as possible. And it's, it's difficult, and I know sometimes that I put that pressure on you guys, but it's, it's a fine line we walk. Well, I think we, you know, we've all pushed it, and we've all taken chances, and we've, a lot of us have been bit and gotten away with it. But you, know, you do this job long enough, you're going to run into some really bad luck on one of these legs. And if you haven't left yourself an out, or a back door. The yeah. average is three deaths a year across the North Atlantic. Yeah. That's the average, right? Yep. Some but years I better, some years worse. A lot of also has to do with our own egos. Okay, a lot of us, we have that mission accomplished kind of deal. I did this in the shortest time. That's a fatal attitude. You keep doing it. You go ahead. Let me know how that goes. It's definitely been a learning curve for myself, that's for sure. Having the opportunity to fly with you guys too and being out there with you and seeing all the that we have to go through to make it happen, this is not your normal flying. My friends think it's so glamorous, these different places we go, they don't realize some of the holes we have to stay in. And then, God, you get so tired on these trips too. 
It's tough. You know, you get to the hotel, you're exhausted, and it, it, you don't get eight hours of sleep because you got to get up in flight plan. You got to look at weather. You got to uh, get out to the airplane. You got a pre-flight, and it's just like you got to fuel, pay fees, everything. It ta it, and it's just like you're always constant. running on five hours of sleep a day. Well, let's see some Give some tiring times. There we go. Wow. tired right now we've had uh, three long days and we're having we're constantly being challenged in one way or another we're not eating much I'm sure we're dehydrated because we're not drinking much jumping time zones being at altitude if you're tired you're physically drained you can make a stupid decision and you're dead because of it there's no wires there's no roads there's no tracks of any kind. It's just a bunch of jungle down there. <laughs> it's like Venus and Butthead flying the most dangerous missions in the world. <laughs> All we can talk about is <laughs> six or eight year old humor type stuff. <laughs> Yeah, tomorrow might be a good day for a rest day, man, because we're totally losing it here. What tank are we on now? Uh, I don't know. Left, I think. <laughs> left? <laughs> we're on one of them. So that flight, we had three long days of flying up into it, um, and we're, we're just beat. We had some serious problems with the airplane getting it ready for the flight, and we were just, just punch drunk happy, like, just laughing at the stupidest shit. It does wear on you, especially if you're going eastbound and you're losing, losing hours every time. I mean, after, if it's a long one, you know, after four or five days of five hours of sleep. Tune in the wrong frequency and it pops up, you know, Bangladesh and you're going to Reykjavik, you know, and you don't have the right frequency and you didn't check it and your brain is messing with you because you're like, oh, did you check it? I didn't check it. Did you check it? I checked it. I think I checked it. <laughs> you know, there's... No one wakes up in the morning that crashes and go, yeah, I'm probably going to crash today. Eh, let's go give it a shot. You know, nobody thinks they're going to crash. That's why I took more than 10 years off. You know, when I got married and had the, my second child, it's like, you know, I might want to not ferry fly for a while because I've, number one, don't want to die and leave these kids with just pictures in a photo album of dad who went down in the North Atlantic. And two, I want to be there for when they're growing up, you know. Right? Last year I missed Christmas, I missed New Year's Eve, I missed my wife's birthday, I missed my anniversary, and it's very, very probable that this year I might not see my second child birth because of what we do. Can our divorce rate in here? 80, 80, 80 percent divorce rate, lots of drinking, lots of smoking. <laughs> That terrain there in a single engine airplane, if you have an engine failure, the best thing to do is just pitch over and get it over with. Not me. I fight for everything. Do you? Oh, here we go. Fight for your marriage? Whoa! Oh. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> this last year, it was interesting. I mean, the first time a lot of you guys met were where you guys were hopping in the airplane flying halfway around the world. You have to keep a good relationship with the guy you're sitting like this with for two weeks, you know. If you're, if you can't keep it light in the cockpit, you're gonna have a really horrible trip. Marcio, I'd, I'd like you to meet somebody. Hula girl. I got her when I first started ferry flying and with me ever since. Hula girl's right here. Yeah. She's not alone. My friend Jack. What a six fish <laughs> I thought I was the only crazy one. No, man, there are weird people everywhere, man. If we got a ditch in the ocean, I would like to ditch in front of a cruise ship because we'd be in the hot tub with a margarita within the hour. Or do I shut off the gas? <laughs> it is so huge to have an element of entertainment and comedy no matter how stressful the situation is. It relaxes the brain. It helps the brain recover from the stress. This is why I became a pilot. To go fly into places like this. This is so cool. Oh, 
Check this out. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> yeah, Lisa, you're good. No, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. What the yeah! <laughs> that was so disgusting. <laughs> no, I'm box. Yeah. I'll pass. How do we Chinese like this, huh? Oh, la la! Very good. It's like eating an artichoke. We're the mayonnaise. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, somehow uh, Carrie jumped on the grenade and did it. I was like, hey, uh, you know, I, uh, I, you're a better man. I don't man know why. Than... I, I was going to give you 100 bucks to do it because I really had no intention of doing it. <laughs> you did it for free. And then I, I ended up doing it for free. Hey, but the funny thing is you ate it and, <laughs> and you got sick. And you got sick. <laughs> oh, that, oh, look at that good second. times, good times. <laughs> What did you eat last night that's killing you? Oh no, we tried some uh, local uh, Pakistan cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good, but um, it was definitely off the grid for me. Kind of paid for it all night and was hoping to get it kind of out of my system before we started flying, but... Iran's airspace is about five miles that way. Those guys aren't too friendly. Oh, so, tell you what though. The way I feel right now, that was the closest bathroom. I'll take it. You're gonna have buns of steel about here, you got some <laughs> going on. Hang in there, my brother. Hang in there. <laughs> yeah. Four and a half hours of the most torturous flying I've ever had to do. Yeah, I suppose it was a real rocket day. It could be a little uh, more uncomfortable. I needed to be in a hospital. I was having the most <laughs> severe stomach sickness that I've ever had in my whole life. When we landed, <laughs> oh. he's, he's hard, he's, he can barely move to get out of the plane. I ran in there, let me find a bathroom for you so you're at least going in the right direction. A little recon. Found one, got out there. <laughs> it was absolutely the most single worst day flying of my life. And I'll never, hopefully, ever have one like that. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm hurt. Uh, Pakistan's revenge. <laughs> you know, we love what we do, but one of the toughest parts is how much we're gone. And, and you know, I feel like I'm missing watching my kids grow up sometimes. And it's tough. You're away a lot. Daddy. What, sweetie? You don't see your family that much. I hadn't seen my mom for about a year, and uh, Pete and I happened to be uh, delivering a plane to it somewhere about 300 miles from where my mom lived, called her up, and we're ferrying this plane from England, and it turns out we're landing in Quincy, Illinois. You know, she was like, I'll do the best I can, and she's just kind of a trooper that way, and uh, sure enough, we we're taxiing in, and oh man, she's actually standing out there. There she is, taking photos. Hey, we made it. We finally made it. How's it going? It felt awesome to see my mom. I mean, I haven't seen her forever. I'll tell you, it's worth the 300 mile drive. Yeah, how For as infrequently as we get together. So it was a nice surprise for sure. It's nice to have those wins on these trips. And sometimes, like uh, this last flight, that was a tremendous, horrible flight coming back home. Singapore to Tokyo to LA, driving to San Diego. Ugh. I said, I am not doing this again. I am done with this. But there's a little bug uh -huh. that comes in and you start bringing your memories back. It's a sickness. It is. It's... Off you go, you know, when it's just like an addiction. How do you stop it? It is man? almost like an addiction. It doesn't take much time to reset, you know? Yeah. You get home, do your laundry, all right? Let's do it, I'm ready to go. Then the phone rings. The phone rings. And you say, no, I'm not doing this again. Well, but it's a Phenom 300 going to Australia, dude. And then you go, and you look at the map, I said, oh, man, this is gonna be cool, you know? 
Okay, I do it. <laughs> oh, okay, I can do it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Who gets to do this? Who gets to buzz the Amazon first thing in the morning? We know this is the most dangerous type of flying, and it's very stressful. The pay is not great, but we do have some amazing experiences, though. There's an iceberg coming up with a hole right through the middle of it. Minimums, minimums. <laughs> terrain. this holy cow that's huge that, that's cool that is very cool that's the whole thing just looks like it's out of the lost world or something look at that wow unbelievable pretty impressive you know this is why i fairy fly dude if we got this day off let's take my jet up and see what it can do awesome here we go Bring eyes on the vertical up to 7,000. This is very cool. Pretty sweet, huh? Yeah, it is. I love the view, too. Okay, you got the aircraft? I've got it. They're well inverted. I'm going to float it down to the horizon. That's about good. Now roll back. Dude, how cool is that? Isn't that bitchin'? That's bitchin'. <laughs> You lucky bastard. That was pretty cool. Well, guys, we've had a hell of a year, but we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up. There's a bunch of flights on the horizon all over the world, different airplanes. It's going to be awesome. We're adding a new pilot to the team. <laughs> Carrie, why don't you introduce your new co-pilot? Gentlemen, <laughs> my daughter, Claire. My new co-pilot. Hi, Claire. Hey. Hey, Claire. Hey. 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 AKA hey. Supergirl. Hey, I'm Brad. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. Hi, Claire Peter. Nice Hi. to meet you. Hi, great to meet you guys. Very Have cool. Have a seat. Huh? I can't wait. Yeah. Now, apparently, she is uh, as crazy as her old man. She's uh, decided <laughs> to go flying around the world in little airplanes, so. There we cool. go. <laughs> yeah, we have a flight already set up for them, so they're going to be flying a single engine plane. And we've got a bunch of other flights set up, too. We have, um, I know that Marcio's got a Jet Aviva Phenom flight coming up, and then there's a bunch of other cool flights. This is going to be much different than what we did last year, more difficult, and it's going to be fun. So cool. let's have a cheers next year. Cool. Here you go, Claire. Let's stay out of the ocean, stay out of the jungle. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for everything. Oh, cheers. 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 Very successful year, gentlemen. Welcome, Claire. Let's do it. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Next on Dangerous Flights. I don't know what's going on. Out of oxygen at 22,000 feet. This is bad. Oh, Icy wings. Ice will kill you. Systems down. The altitude selector has failed. The DI's boots are failed. The prop ice is failed. I think I lost the bat. You gotta pee, don't you? A sky-high plumbing problem. Whoopsie, little turbulence. Oh, God, this is gross. And two new rookies join the team. This new copa that I have. speaking from the left-hand side. I'm not even sure if he's out of his diapers yet. Dad. Well, when so, I tell you to do so something I'm the first try. time, don't argue with me. Just say, okay, That's what I'll I try. I'm, I'm not going to get any better with you yelling in my ears. Woo!